I've been involved in independent politics for over 25 years. My time goes back to the Perot days. I worked with people like um, Jackie Saylor, Kathy Stewart, David Belmont, Dr. Lenora Fulani, who uh, ran for president and was the first one female to get on the ballot in all 50 states. And we go back a long way with uh, independent politics because I believe that's the future of this country and we've got to change the system as it is now. It's not working. Well, I'll tell you what, you have probably forgotten more about politics in South Carolina than I will ever know. And I really appreciate being able to learn from you. Uh, one of the interesting things about the forward party that started about a year and a half ago, so we're uh, toddlers com compared to the South Carolina Independence Party. But one of the things that is apparent on, on our side is we don't, we're not political operatives. We're people who got involved in a movement because we think that there are a lot of uh, people who feel uh, politically hopeless, and we want to give them hope. They feel politically homeless, and we want to give them a home. This is a big tent idea, and we, that's, that's what we're going after. So uh, we need political expertise because at the end of the day, you cannot change politics until you win elections. Yeah. And that's what we're about, is, is finding better candidates and winning elections. Well, when I started out, I was a political novice, too, and I think that's a plus, you know, because people want to see real people, people that can help them solve um, everyday problems, because that's part of what's going on in Washington and in the state now, is uh, the common person's not being heard unless you got a truckload of money and not listening to you, you know. And I, I go back to, to pro days again, too, and, and I think that's what... It, um, set that spark, you know, because he got over 19% of the vote and he could have gotten more than that had he not um, dropped out and came back in. But I thought that was awesome, too, that even though he dropped out, he came back in, he still got over 19% of the vote because people saw something. There was a change. And I feel that the winds of change are blowing again now that this is an excellent opportunity because people see what's going on now. You know, they um, are allowed to access more information now. So they can see what the two parties are doing, and, and we've got to change it if we want to save this country. Exactly. We know from polling that there are now more people who are independents than both Republicans and Democrats put together by a, a percentage of two. Yeah. And so you're exactly right. The winds have changed the blowing. People want different choices. But, you know, in my case, for instance, I got involved in this because I realized that uh, my vote didn't seem to count. You know, that, and I look back over the last 50 years that I've been voting, and I realized I just had this illusion of choice. But I didn't really have a, have a choice, uh, you know, unless I voted in a primary. That's because that's where, by and large, the elections really happen, not in the general. And so one of the things that we're dedicated to is electoral reform that will put choice and uh, a louder voice back to the voters and that's what it needs to that's what it needs to be i agree with you you know because you know right now south carolina is an open primary state which i think is good and, but there's a push in the state to close the primary which i think will be devastating you know because that um closes down your choices you know and i think that people do need to have choices because if you got more choices then you can build a a, a better a government for people you know one that can help People solve um, everyday problems. Well, exactly. And so you have to wonder why uh, are the uh, dominant parties so afraid of competition? And, you know, the fact is that uh, competition is just a bedrock idea of conservatism and, and capitalism and, and the, the, the economic freedom and the other freedoms that this country was built on. So why can't we have more competition in our elections? Well, I think that's an, an excellent um, idea that competition is what has made America great. You know, right. that's what did it for America is that being able to have those choices, you know, not being pigeonholed into one hole. And uh, I think that the two major parties are against competition because they like things the way that they are. You know, either, either you're on the left or you're on the right. There's no, you know, no center. But History has shown us that the majority of people are in the center now. Right. You know. I was going to say that, and the media likes that too, because it's easy. They've trained us on all these issues that are incredibly complex that 
they want a simple answer, right or left, yes or no, blue or red, right? Yeah. Well, one thing I think about the, the media is that during COVID, we were able to go into some of the media's homes and see how they lived, and they know bad news sales, you know, and that some of them don't live a bad lifestyle from what I saw, you know. Yeah, so, right. so they understand that bad news sales, you know. They don't bring me no good news. Well, that's right. And so it, it is, uh, some have called it this, uh, uh, you know, the great uh, political industrial complex that we have built up in America. And it's working for the incumbents, the media, the parties, but it's not working for voters. No. Voters feel disenfranchised, disaffected, and particularly, as you have pointed out to me, the, the younger uh, demographics want a different choice. They want yeah. a different landscape, uh, and they they want uh, they want a voice. They want a louder voice in in the way this country works. And I have to say that, uh, and I'm a few years older than you, but you know, I'm not proud of what we're leaving that younger generation. Yeah. And I want to improve it to the degree that I can uh, before I can anymore. Yep, yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> and you know, it's just like my daughters. I brought them up to. Um, you know, allowed them to think as individuals. They were allowed to make their own choices, you know. And, and they've come to me and said that, that the two parties don't work for them, you know, yeah. because they've been able to um, research, do a, a lot of research, and, and they see what's going on, you know, because there is more information that's out there now, and young people aren't buying what the, the two parties are selling now. You know, they're not buying that. They want to see problem solved in that, you know, they, they want to see that. They they don't understand why you can't get relief on student aid, but you can bail out the banks, you know. They don't understand how, how that is. You know, nobody ever says anything. They all want to hollow them. you got to be responsible for student loans, and the banks need to be responsible for the loans they made, too, but that didn't stop them from bailing them out, you know. They're too big to fail. That's exactly right. So, we've got to Give young people, um, and I don't, you know, and all people, uh, whether it's gender, age, race, this is a big tent, big tent party, big tent idea, big tent movement. And, uh, we think that we have got a lot to, to offer because for one thing, uh, all opinions are welcome. Yeah. All opinions, uh, you know, the, the, and we mentioned this just a moment ago that, uh, the, the problems that we have today, are so complex that uh, a, a, a right or a left answer it just cannot be the right answer. Yeah. Right. And so uh, we've got to find a way to bring compromise back into the political yeah, conversation. You know, to bring uh, data, uh, truth, you know, real facts. Back into the conversation that we can that we can all agree on. How in yeah. the world do we ever get there again? Yeah. But but this is the way we got to start, I think. And so to that uh, point, we are starting at the ground level, and we're going to build up. So we're starting at the local and the municipal level. Mm -hmm. We're not running a presidential candidate. We're starting at the ground level, and we're gonna we're gonna populate. Uh, we're gonna put candidates in the uh, you know all the school boards and into uh, the city councils, yeah. uh, and and those races are nonpartisan today. Yeah, uh, and you know I think that's going to that's going to begin to build uh, a a sense of uh, momentum, you know, across the state and across America because uh, you know the Ford Party is a fifty state strategy, and eventually we're going to get to the point where. We don't, we don't need a majority in, in the legislature or a majority on the city council, but we need enough to 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 make a make a difference yeah, to to to, yeah. to channel uh, the the movement of government in a more productive way. That's 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 what we're here to do. Well, I agree, and I don't like the idea that we're open to listening to all ideas because to me that's how you learn, you know. Because if you're doing something one way and then you figure out this is the wrong way and somebody else has built a better mousetrap, there's nothing wrong with saying that he's, that he's doing it better. And let's look, look at that. And I think that's what you, what you have now is that compromise is a dirty word. 
Right. You know, you, you can't compromise. It. That's why we don't have a speaker of the house today because they can't compromise. That's right. you, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's in their corners and, and that and they can't come together. And it actually hurts the country, you know, when we don't uh, uh, really compromise does. in that, you know. It really does. And, and, and we're not trying to build another party like the party we already have. We're trying to build a different kind of party. And what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, the at the national level, we sort of set our values. And our values are things like uh, compromise, like everybody's invited into the conversation as long as they show grace and tolerance. Yeah. Uh, we're looking for those 70% solutions that 70% of South Carolinians can agree on. Yeah. And then move on. Well, I, I like that word you said, values, you know, because that's something that's missing now. Mm-hmm. Values and morals is something that's missing in today's. People are, are, are so comfortable with telling lies. You tell a lie long enough till it becomes the truth, you know, but a lie is never going to become the truth. Truth is truth. Truth is exactly. truth is not truth. You know? Right. right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> truth is always going to be the truth, you right. know. Right. My grandmother used to say you got to tell the truth for one time and it'll stand on its own. You know, if you tell a lie, you got to keep telling that lie. That's but true. eventually, truth's going to come out. Either way it goes, it's going to come out. Well, that is exactly what we're what we're all about, what we're trying to do. And then at the state level, we'll set priorities because the priorities in South Carolina are not going to be the same priorities in California or Michigan or Pennsylvania yeah. or Virginia. They're going to be specific to South Carolinians and the, and the things that matter here. And then we're going to let the candidates create their own positions on things with our help. Yeah. Uh, and with the, you know, based on the values and these principles. And so our goal now is to run and win yeah. 25 candidates in the 24 election. And now those can be affiliates, meaning uh, Republicans and Democrats who identify uh, with, as, with forward values. Mm-hmm. They can be switchers, or they can be uh, new candidates, you know, independent candidates running that way. One of the things that South Carolina uh, Independence Party brings to this merger uh, which is very valuable, obviously, is ballot access. Yeah. And so, you know, we're going to, you know, that's, that's, uh, we've got to get on the ballot in order to run yeah, a candidate in order is. to win election. Yeah, right? so true. Yeah. So, uh, that's a, that's a very exciting proposition and yeah. we're, we're looking well, forward to doing that. Well, we look forward to working with forward too, you know, and the, I like the, the forward, I, I like to say the forward thinking and I like the, the forward thinking. I like the fact that it's a big ten and then it's open to, to all. And I like the fact that we're allowed to have our own individual thoughts. You know, that's I right. think that, I think that's awesome that you're not sitting there pretending we got to think this way, you got to think that way. I think you know you you have to let the free flow of ideas. You know, you absolutely that's did. what that's what makes us strong. You know, you absolutely being did. allowed to uh, to think. Well, you know, and, and I'm sure you've heard this from your friends when they ask you what you're doing and you tell them, well, I'm uh, working for in a third party situation, you know, and trying to try to fix things, you know, that way. And generally they'll say, uh, well, good luck with that, you know, and, and, uh, you know, a lot of skepticism, but, uh, and they'll say, as they said to me, you know, well, why bother? Why bother? You can't change anything. And, you know, what I, what I tell them is, look, uh, when Mahatma Gandhi led the salt march across India, mm-hmm. he bothered and he got thousands and thousands of people walking on that salt march, salt march, and because he bothered and they bothered. And then when Martin Luther King Jr. you know led that group across the bridge in Selma, mm-hmm. it was because he bothered. Yeah. And so what I say to people is, come bother with us. Yeah. Come bother. Come bother with us, and, and let's bother together, and let's get something done. And that's our fastball. Well, I, I think so, and I think it's like you said um, with uh, Martin Luther King. I think he understood that um, he was planting seeds that weren't going to benefit him because he lost his life, you know, planting those seeds and that. But you can see what happened um, later on as the as the years went by, as the seeds started to develop in that. And I think that's what we have to keep in mind too. People say, "Why bother?" You bother because you want to make things better for your kids, for your grandkids, and you have to plant those seeds. And we may not even be around 
when that seed starts coming, when they start to become fruitful. But you got to, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Yeah. step. You know, you got to start somewhere. You know, so and I think that uh, South Carolina Independence and forward merging together is the first step. You know, in changing things. Well said. And so we we hope people will join us and bother with us. Please do. Thank mm-hmm. you.